Ramanand, SG12, Vaishnava studies into Mahatmas, Vaishnava studies into Mahatmas, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakura made great strides in his studies at Puri. He describes them in his autobiography, I appointed Gopanatha Pandita as my tutor and with his assistance I first studied the twelve cantos of the Bhagavatam with Sri Swami's commentaries, two other Panditas named Ariharadasa and Morkandaya Mahapatra, who had studied Nyaya, logic, and Vedanta at Navadvipa and Bainarais, studied with him. Being a little weak in grammar, which he had originally studied with Isvara Chandra Sagara and Vijendranatha Tagore in Calcutta, he resumed his studies and gradually learned to compose in Sanskrit. After finishing the Bhagavata I made a copy of the Shatse and Dairabha by Srila Jiva Gosvami and read it. Then I copied and read the Vedanta commentary, Kavinda Bhashaya, written by Balu Deva Vidayabhushana. Next, I read the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Sri Larupa Gosvami. Then I made a copy of the Hari Bhakti Ka LPA Ludika, the latter work was an unsigned manuscript found by the Thakura, which he was much impressed by. It was later published by him and thereafter by his son, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura. The Thakura also studied Pramaya Ratnavali and other Gaudiya Vaishnava classics which he was able to secure from the library of the Raja in Puri and from the homes of Vaishnava Panditas. His study and worship were intense, and he quickly became well versed in the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. He composed a book in Sanskrit called Dattakha Ustubha in 1874, 104 verses on Vaishnava philosophy with commentary, and he began composing the shlokas of Krishna Sanhita, one of his best known works. While living in Puri, the Thakura formed a society of devotees called the Bhagavata Sayangsat, which held meetings in the Jagannatha Vallabha gardens for the purpose of discussing topics of Krishna. These gardens were the former Bhajana side of Ramananda Raya, the great follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Many Vaishnavas and Panditas attended the discourses, but one saintly devotee named Drajihu Natha Dasa Bhagavaji refused to join, due to a misunderstanding about the society's function and because the Thakura was not wearing the traditional Vaishnavati Luka and Tuluzi neck beads. He even requested other Vaishnavas not to attend the meetings, for he did not consider the Thakura to be a real devotee. The Thakura's biographer, Paramananda Vidyaratna, and others recount the details of this incident. After criticizing the Thakura, the Bhagavaji became afflicted with a severe illness. One night in a dream, Lord Jagannatha appeared to him and told him to pray for the mercy of Thakura Bhakti Vinod if he wanted release from certain death. In the Gaura Parsha Dacharya Tahali by Hari Kripadasa, a work containing biographical sketches of many great Vaishnavas, it is mentioned that upon awakening, the Bhagavaji quickly approached the Thakura's residence and fell at his feet begging forgiveness for his offense. He spoke humbly to the Thakura saying, I noticed that you never wore Tuluzi beads on your neck nor Tiluka on your forehead, and because of this I disrespected you and have committed an offense. Please forgive me, the Thakura replied, Bhagavaji Mahashaya, what is my crime? The Vaishnavati Luka and Tuluzi neck beads are given by the Diksha Guru, but so far Mahaprabhu has not sent me a Diksha Guru. I therefore just chant the holy name on Tuluzi beads. In this situation would it be good to whimsically wear Tiluka or neck beads the Thakura recounts? Bhagavaji Mahashiya was a seed haparusha, a perfected soul, therefore he could understand everything, he praised me and showed mercy to me. And I became his follower, the Thakura arranged some medicines to help cure the Bhagavaji and completely forgave him for any offense. From that time on, Rajihu Natha Dasa Bhagavaji had nothing but praise for the Thakura's Vaishnava qualities. On the way to the same Madhi of Hariadasa Thakura, near the Totagopinatha temple, was the Bhajana Kutira, cottage or hut where one worships the holy name by constant chanting, of Sainata Nagasvami. Some great renunciates regularly met there to chant the holy name. An especially great soul in that gathering, who later associated with Gauraki Shora Dasa Bhagavaji, was known as Swarupa Dasa Bhagavaji. The Thakura recognized him as a parama and sought and often visited him and sought his association. He describes the activities of this saintly person in the following way, all day he would perform bhajana within his small cottage, and in the evening he would come outside and pay his prostrated obeisances to the holy Tuluzi tree. 
Then he would loudly chant the holy name and sing, dance and cry in ecstasy. At this time many Vaishnavas would come to get his darshana, audience. Some of them would offer him small handfuls of Jagannatha Prasada. In order to satisfy his hunger, he would consent to accept it, but he would not accept much. At this time one of the Vaishnavas would read from Chaitanya Bhagavata or other Gaudiya Vaishnava literatures, and he would listen. By 10 p.m. he would go into his kutira and again start his bhajana. In the middle of the night he would go to the shore of the ocean alone, wash his face and take a complete bath. He did this for fear that some Vaishnava would perform some service for him without his knowledge. Since he was blind in both eyes, the question arises, how could he go to the ocean in the middle of the night to take his bath? Only Mahaprabhu knows. There was no doubt that he was a seed Haparusha, a spiritually perfected soul. He did not have a single material desire. In the evening I would sometimes go to take darshan out of his lotus feet. He would talk with the people and his speech was very sweet. He instructed me, Krishna nama bihuli bainanevair forget the name of Krishna the Thakura further comments on this period of his life in his autobiography, while in Puri I made much advancement in devotional service. I became more detached from worldly life, any idea I might have had, that worldly progress produces anything of lasting value was gone forever. Almost every evening I would go to the temple to see the Lord, to hear and chant the holy name and associate with the devotees. On one side of the temple was the Mukti Mandap. The Brahmanas would sit there and give some instruction, but all of them were Malayavadis, impersonalists. When I would pass them my mind would become disturbed, because of the blasphemy they promulgated. Therefore, I would sit near the goddess Lakshmi Mandira or the Mahaprabhu Padapadma. When I was sitting there many of the Panditas from the Mukti Mandap would come and sit, with me this place is in a sub-temple within the walls of the Jagannatha Mandira, and it contains the divine footprints of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Many of the Malayavadis became devout Vaishnavas by receiving the association of Bhakti Vinod Thakura at what came to be known as the Bhakti Mandap, where he lectured on the Srimad Bhagavatam. One day, while Thakura Bhakti Vinod and the Vaishnavas were sitting in the Bhakti Mandap reading Srimad Bhagavatam, the Raja of Puri, along with about fifty of his attendants, burst noisily into the meeting. The Thakura was unable to tolerate the king's disrespectful behavior towards the Vaishnavas and the Bhagavatam. The biographer Sundarananda Vidyavinada mentions in his Shri Kshetra that the Thakura addressed the king as follows, You have the right to hold the position of kingship over your small kingdom, but the Supreme Lord, Jagannatha Parashottama, is the king of all kings. Therefore, it is mandatory that you shall respect to his Bhakti Mandap, where his glories are daily sung, realizing he had behaved badly, the king of Puri bowed down to the Srimad Bhagavatam and all the assembled Vaishnavas and begged them to forgive his offenses. At various holy places celebrated by Gaudiya Vaishnavas, specifically the Totagopinatha temple, the Samadhi of Sri Lahari Adasathakura, the Siddha Bakula tree and the Gambhira, the private apartment of Sri Chaitanya, the Thakura spent long hours absorbed in discussing the pastimes of Krishna and chanting the holy name. He devoted much time to discussion of the scriptures, and he prepared notes on the Vedanta Sutra later used by Shyama Lal Gosvami, who published the notes in his edition of the Vedanta Sutra with the commentary of Balu Deva Vidyabhushana, Kavinda Bhashaya. The Thakura recalls his stay in Puri with happiness, just as the Jagannatha temple is very lofty and beautiful, so also the service to the deity was wonderful. To see it was charming to the mind. Daily, from five to seven hundred people were present to see the routine festivals like the evening or tea, etc. What bliss! Many kinds of pilgrims came from all over India to attend the religious festivals. Seeing that, one's eyes are soothed. Olalu, his son, Lulita Prasad, when you behold all these pastimes with a pure heart, only then can these events be understood. There were many celebrations, like Dalayatra, Rathayatra, etc taking many constables. I made such great exertions to oversee the pilgrims how can I write of it all? I would make favorable arrangements for the pilgrims to see the deity and take prasada, and I would hear the people's complaints. I spent my time in Puri in great happiness, seeing the festivals, acquiring knowledge and devotion for Ashoda Mukshetra is directly Bhikkhuntha, the spiritual world, what doubt is there in 1874, 
Bimal Prasad, the fourth son of Bhakti Vinod Thakura, took his birth, and the Thakura mentions that all of the auspicious ceremonies such as Anut, Prasena, first eating of grains, were performed with Jagannatha Prasada. Later this son, as has been documented in Aru IOHF Vishnu, volume I of this series, Leves OHF A Vaishnava would come to be known as a Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura Prabhupada, the founder of the Gaudiya Math and spiritual master of his divine grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, Fahundayar, Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness.